Hello, today we're going to focus on decomposing fractions. Now, as a reminder, decomposing fractions is tearing apart these fractions. So if you look at this example, it does say destructing the pieces. So we have three fourths and notice here represents three fourths, but this is also equivalent to three fourths. The only difference is we decompose three fourths and tore it apart. So now we have one fourth plus one fourth plus one fourth, which is also equivalent to three fourths. We just tore it apart piece by piece. While composing fractions is bringing the fractions back together, connecting the pieces. So now if I was to take one fourth plus one fourth plus one fourth and put it back together, notice they're gluing it back together, it brings you back to three fourths. So today we're going to focus on representing fractions in different forms, and you're going to do that by decomposing each fraction. For example, it says decompose 7 fourths into a sum of fractions two different ways. Now, there's even more than two ways to decompose 7 fourths, but we're just going to find two ways today. Now notice here we have one-fourth, two-fourths, three-fourths, four-fourths. These are my options to decompose. Now I'm just going to follow these directions and use the values that were given to me, even though you could use many different methods to do this. So here I need to select two of these fractions from the bottom that would go in each of these boxes. So what would equal seven-fourths? Well, if I have four-fourths, and three fourths, I notice I have the same denominator so I can add my numerators. Four fourths plus three fourths is seven fourths. And notice I decompose seven fourths into two different pieces, four fourths and three fourths. But now when we add them together, it brings you back to seven fourths. Now I'm choosing to do it this way, but somebody else might choose to do it a different way. So 7 fourths here can also be represented as 3 fourths plus 2 fourths plus 1 fourth plus 1 fourth. Now I'm going to see if this is correct by adding my numerators. 3 plus 2 is 5, 5 plus 1 is 6, 6 plus 1 is 7. And I can simply add my numerators because my denominators are all 4. And notice when I add these four fractions together, it does give me 7 fourths. Now there's many other ways you can decompose 7 fourths, but I just wanted to show you two of the ways. How we tore apart 7 fourths and when you add them back together, it should bring you back to that original fraction of 7 fourths. Now here, I have 1 half plus 1 half plus 1 half. Now notice I represented this in two different ways. Here I have 3 times 1 half, and I discovered that 1 half plus 1 half plus 1 half, well I see the number 1 half 3 times. So 3 times 1 half is also another way to represent this expression. And now when we choose to multiply 3 times 1 half, or if we choose to do 1 half plus 1 half plus 1 half, it all gives me 3 halves. So using multiplication or using addition are two different ways to decompose three halves. Now we're going to do the same thing here for five fifths, which we know 5 divided by 5 is 1, and you have the same numerator and denominator that equals 1, because when you take something divided by the same thing, it gives you 1. But now here we have 1 fifth plus 1 fifth plus 1 fifth plus 1 fifth plus 1 fifth. Now that might be a lot to say if you were explaining this addition problem to somebody, which is why you might want to choose to represent it a different way using multiplication, because we know repeated addition is very similar to multiplication. So here we have one-fifth, we see one-fifth five times. So notice this multiplication problem here, five times one-fifth is the same as this repeated addition problem. And notice here, 5 times 1 fifth, or if we choose to do 1 fifth plus 1 fifth plus 1 fifth plus 1 fifth plus 1 fifth, they both equal and are equivalent to 5 fifths, or 1. 
Now in this problem here, you have five sevenths. Your task today is to figure out which other expressions represent five sevenths. Now I notice here there's boxes, which is telling me there's going to be more than one answer. So we're gonna go through each of these expressions and see if it equals five sevenths. So here we have three sevenths plus four sevenths, which is seven sevenths, so that can't be. But here I notice all my denominators are the same, so I can just add my numerators. 1 plus 1 is 2, 2 plus 1 is 3, 3 plus 1 is 4, 4 plus 1 is 5, which that gives me 5 sevenths. I also notice here 3 plus 2 is 5, 7 is my denominator, 5 sevenths. Here I only have 1 seventh plus 1 seventh, which is 2 sevenths. But here I have 4 sevenths plus 1 seventh, which is 5 sevenths. So notice here there was three answers and three different ways to represent the fraction five sevenths. And each of these ways are other ways to represent the fraction five sevenths as we decompose and tear it apart. Now we're going to do the same thing again. I notice there's boxes, so that means we're going to have more than one solution. Here we have two fifths plus two fifths, which in fact is four fifths, and that's what we're looking for. Three fifths plus one fifth is four fifths. That's exactly what we're looking for. One fifth plus one fifth plus one fifth plus one fifth is four fifths. Two fifth plus one fifth is unfortunately three fifths. That's not what we want. And one fifth plus one fifth is two fifths, which unfortunately that is not what we want. So again, we have three different ways on how we can decompose the fraction four fifths. These are all correct representations of the fraction four fifths. Now here, I have a multiplication problem. My goal here, we have 1 8 times 3. So we know that 1 8 times 3 is the same as 1 8 plus 1 8 plus 1 8. And in fact, that's what my picture shows me here. Notice I have 1 8 shaded here, 1 8 and 1 8. Now when I add those three fractions together, I get 3 eighths. But if I also choose to multiply 1 eighth times 3, I also get 3 eighths. And some of you might have recognized all we were doing was multiplying my numerators 3 and 1 to give me a new numerator of 3 eighths. Now for this next one, we have 5 times 1 eighth. You're welcome to draw a picture if you would like. You might have also recognized this pattern here of multiplying the numerators because every whole number can also be divided by 1. So technically you have 5 times 1 is 5 and 1 times 8 is 8, giving me 5 eighths. Now you could also continue from this problem here and go 1 eighth plus 1 eighth plus 1 eighth plus 1 eighth plus 1 eighth, which when you add that together, that's 5 eighths. And that repeated addition is the same as writing five times one eighth, giving you an answer of five eighths. Now here I have a little bit more um, multiplication. Our goal here is to multiply and select which represents the answer. Now, I notice I see boxes as well, which does mean I'm gonna have more than one answer. So here I have 10 times one tenth. Now that's the same as writing the repeated addition problem, one tenth plus one tenth plus one tenth and so on, 10 times. Or I could just do 10 times one tenth, which happens to be 10 tenths. Now 10 tenths is the correct answer. However, if we, have, we know that 10 divided by 10 is also equivalent to one. And notice one is an option as well, so one and 10 tenths would be my answer here. Now let's say if we were representing one whole water bottle. I'm not gonna say to somebody I have 10 tenths of this water bottle. You're just gonna say I have one whole water bottle. So which is why it's important when you see something like this that you understand when the numerator and denominator are the same, that's equivalent to one. And it's easier to explain the situation of this problem as representing your answer as just one. Now, for this next one, we have four times one-fourth, which is the same as one-fourth plus one-fourth plus one-fourth plus one-fourth, or four times one-fourth, 
which is four fourths. Now I also notice there's the same numerator and denominator, and I know that four divided by four equals one. So now I have four fourths as an answer, and I have one. Now notice there's many numbers that are equivalent to one. There's many ways to represent the number one. Here I'm showing you two different ways. You have four fourths and 10 tenths. They, they all represent one. And there's many different ways to represent the number one. However, when you see four fourths or you see 10 tenths, you can simplify and you can divide and recognize four divided by four is one or 10 divided by 10 is one. And that's a much better way to represent your answer and explain that to somebody to show them that you have one whole. So as you complete today's activities, you are going to be decomposing fractions using repeated addition or multiplication. If you see boxes as answer choices, that's telling you there's going to be more than one solution. So make sure you read the directions carefully. As always, you can refer back to this video on my YouTube channel at any time.